Hey everybody! So in the last tutorial we um, I showed you how to make a leaf motif such as this and so now in this tutorial I am going to show you how I take my leaf motif and turn it into a whole piece of a uh, pattern or arch or whatever you want to call it. So first of all I have a couple of the leaf motifs here. I made two different versions and I have them in groups so what I'm gonna do is kind of arrange them like I have here kind of staggered and uh, this is for a little artwork so I'm not going to worry about it being seamless or anything at this um, at this stage so I'm just going to make a little a little motif a little artwork so I'll put this one here I'll put this one up here and then I will duplicate the first one oops not delete it I'll drag my layer group and duplicate it so there we go. So we've got three and I'll just space them a little bit like so. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I've got my first row and then I will duplicate them again. And, but this time I think I'll put, go like this because I don't want it to look too matchy matchy. And then I'll take this first one here. There we go, the more green one. Duplicate it. We'll drag it over here. Okay, so far everything's looking right. And I'm not gonna worry about it being perfect and I'm gonna hit auto select group. Sometimes with this it makes it a little easier for them to be selected. And now I will just take a couple, the first two, duplicate those groups again and I'll put them down here. So all in all, nothing too difficult, just kind of staggering out our pattern. And there we go. Now that's a good start. So we've got that layer down. And I think what I will do is now start with the background color. So I'm gonna add a new layer underneath all these and to make this, this group uh, more organized, I'm gonna select all of those groups group them in a new group and put leaves just so that it's more easy. So here I have got um, kind of a brownish color that I selected from one of these leaves like here. So I just use my eyedropper and I'm just gonna push the paint bucket. That's good enough. And then also I kind of wanted it to not be so flat. So what I did was I went in here to my color selection and I made like a darker color of this, moved my eyedropper down over here so there's a darker one. I'll make a new layer, paint it, and that's good, but what I'm gonna do is mask out some of that so we have some gradations between the light and the dark. So I will just hit Option and click on my mask so that way it automatically blocks everything out. So now none of my brown is showing and I will go to my gradient tool over here on the left and I wanted to have foreground to transparent, that's perfect, and I want to take, um, select the reflected gradient. So now I'll just go through here and let's make sure that my white is showing, there we go. So now I'm gonna reveal some of the darker. So I'll just go like that. And I'm holding my shift down so it doesn't make it at an angle because I want it kind of straight across. And like so, that's cool. Good enough, I'm not really worried about it being perfect. Just kind of wanted some dark and I might take that opacity down a little bit. There we go. So that's good enough. And next thing we will do is I added some green stripes behind the leaves. So I'll add another new layer. And these were with a pattern brush and I think it is, I, so I go over here to my pattern brush tool and I believe it was Impressionist, let's see here. I think it's the Impressionist, Ma um, Impressionist Masters uh, brush number 42. Modern Impressionist, sorry. Modern Impressionist brush number 42. So that's the one it was. Yeah, that is it. And basically, you know that I, on the previous one, I had used the Impressionist Masters Color Blends. And I had used um, number 23, I think. 
and that's still a pretty good one to use for this one so I'm not going to change the color. So I'm using the Impressionist Masters color number 23 and I want the brush to be a bit fatter so I'm going to just click my right black a little bit until it's a size that I like um, or you can choose it up here and change your size. And let's see, I'm going to take that away. So now I'll just go through here in the background. I'm not really worried about it being perfectly spaced or anything. And drop in a few of these strokes like so. So we're going to go up and down and that adds some nice background texture. And that's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now we've got those stripes. And over here, I'm going to pair this back so you can see what I had done. So I'm going to take off the gold, the big gold um, leopard print. And actually above it and below it, I had had some little glitter confetti. So the, I wanted you to see the background part. So the next thing that I'm going to do is take this brush that... Um, there's a link for members. You can download it at the bottom of this tutorial. And let's go to my brushes. It's down here and it's this dotty texture brush. So we're going to use this brush over here. And I did a couple things. So behind the li um, green lines, I had used that texture brush. Um, the dots and I had given it some sparkle with my creative couture styles and then I had put a couple dots not with any styles applied above them. So let's start with the sparkly ones behind the green lines. So I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to take this brush and that's a good size as it is and basically though I'm going to take I'm going to use my pattern stamp tool so that it puts it out in these cool colors like so, um, the pattern stamp tool. And then I have to go down here and reselect my dotty texture brush. So as you see, it puts out different colors. And what I will do is I'm gonna go ahead and in my styles panel, um, this is a tip that helps me because um, I have a lot of different styles collection. I take a few styles from every collection and put it in here so that I can quick apply it and then I can go um, sort later like and maybe change that style but it gives me a good general opinion, uh, a good general idea. So from my creative couture I have like two rich glitters, two jewels, two pavés, two textiles, two deeply encrusted, kind of a little selection of the whole collection. So I'm just going to put a uh, rich glitter so this is rich glitter 2 from creative couture but you can put whatever glitter you like and I'm gonna go through here and now you see that the style as I paint I can see the style and kind of see how it looks so I'm gonna just freehand here a couple some uh, strokes and I'm gonna maybe not do it all the way down and just kind of add some accents here like I did on the right. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, just going to add some background accents kind of peeking out behind that green. So that's good enough. Looks good. Got a little glittery accents. It adds a little bit of depth and texture. So that's good for that layer. And honestly, I'm just going to leave it on the rich glitter layer. So that's perfect. Rich glitter too. Perfect. Now above those green stripes I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to pick a color that is a bit more orangey because that background's kind of orangey. So I'll go with maybe color number 21 and I'm going to add some of these that I added some kind of spots orange spots above the green stripes just for a little interesting texture. So it kind of just brings that orangey brown from the background into the foreground a little bit. So all in all it's just adding some depth and kind of having fun with it. So that's great. We've got that. 
Now the next main thing that I want to add in is those um, leopard kind of gold leopards across. Oh, another thing that I did, and I'll probably do this at the end, is I made some of these, I changed some of the opacities on these leaves so that they kind of looked more subtle, but I'm gonna do that at the end and show you how I did that um, later after I, cause that adds some depth, but you'll see it more when I add the gold above it. So right now, on the one that I had already made, I'm gonna put these gold, uh, this gold pattern here. And this really adds a dimensionality and it kind of ties in with that gold in the background. So I love it. So let's go here to my left. And in this tutorial, I have got um, four members. I've got a new brush, which I'll do is I'll just, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna put a layer style on top of it, but I'll just use a pattern brush so it makes different colors. And I'm gonna select Wild, Wild Leopard Basic and I'm going to have to make a new layer above my leaves because this wants to be above it. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a gold. It doesn't have to be the perfect gold, but I'm going to quick use my styles here and add a gold. And so that way when I paint, you'll kind of get the idea. But you know what? That one's kind of dark. So I think I'll go through and go into my libraries. I've already got my um, styles 24 karat gold library loaded up. So I'm just going to make sure I get a bright one and I'll use 12A and then I can change it later. And I'm just going to do like I did here and kind of make a few strokes. So you can kind of play with it. I'm going to get my Wacom pen out here and just make something until you like it. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to kind of do like I did over there and add a little bit of these and they kind of you know every time you paint it's kind of it twists and turns the brush so it's always different so that's cool and I actually like that style I think that's the one that I used before so it's 12a and if you ever want to kind of play around with the style a bit you can double click on the pattern overlay and within that move it around so that it kind of suits your design best so put those light areas where you like it or the highlights. So that's kind of nice. So I like to just kind of play around with it like that. So I'll hit okay, that looks good. And then just to top it off, the last thing that I did was I put um, a little bit of glitter sort of accents below it. And I'm actually, I've got two here. Anyway, so I have some little bit of glitter, green glitter accents below it as just a different, just add a little texture. So what I'm going to do is below this layer here, above the leaves, I'll add a new layer. And I'm going to take my pattern stamp tool, go over to my brushes, and I save this here as glitter. And I want these to be in green, so I will pick... I'll just go ahead and pick the 23 because that's mainly green. And that's good, I believe. So I will go ahead and add the Rich Glitter 2 color um, Creative Couture style to it, which is just one of my glitter styles. I like that. And then underneath, I'm just going to add some of these accents. And this is just a definitely like a maximalist sort of design. We've got a lot of different layers here but I like the different textures and a little bit of sparkle and it's just fun. So there I've added those glitter layer, uh, glitter kind of sparkly accents underneath the, uh, underneath the leopard, gold leopard thing. So I'm almost done. The only thing that I want to do is I want to add some, some uh, contrast because everything is like kind of the same brightness. So I'm going to go into my leaves and I'm going to make sure that it's auto select group so that it'll select my leaves and I'm going to select and I, cause I don't want them to look all too perfect and all too the same. So first see if I can select this. Oh wait, am I on the right one? Oh no. Cause they're all within a group. That's why. So let's turn off group, go here and try to find these things. So I'll take the second one 
and I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit. Not too crazy much, but it just makes it a little bit less bright. So like 82. I think I will take this one over here's opacity down. Let's find that one here. It's a little trickier because I put a group within a group. So if I auto select group, it's going to select the bigger one. So I'm going to take that down a little bit and I just want things to have a little bit more depth and contrast. And then I'm going to maybe take this, the opacity of this one down here. So let's find that bad boy. And obviously this is not the best way to find your layers here. There we go. It's that one. And we'll just take that down a little bit. And then what else did I want to do? Oh, some of the golds, if you look here and here and here, they kind of um, looks the same. Like you can tell that these are the duplicated thing. And I, I want to add, I don't want it to all look the same. So I'm going to go to this one over here, find that bad boy. And what I should probably do is take these out of the leaves group because then I can auto select the group and find, grab my layer faster. So there's this group. And now what I'm going to do is go into my gold pattern overlay and move it around. And so that way it tones it down and it doesn't look as matchy matchy to the other one. So I'll hit OK. And I think I'll take this one down too. It just looks a little bright. So I'm going to go into that group double click on the pattern overlay and I can move the gold around. And I just like that because sometimes with digital art, you know, you use this, you use duplication, you use whatever, which makes good, but you'll kind of have to go out of your way a little bit to make it more, um, you know, you don't want things to look too artificial and not, you know, not handmade. So the, if you add a little bit of variety by moving the pattern overlay, they don't look like they're duplicated so much. And so for group number two, I'm going to right up here, I'm going to move this around and I like that. So it's just nice, a nice touch that it, everything looks more handmade. So I'll hit OK. And there we go. So this is, this could, um, you can make this for a background for your card or for some wrapping paper or anything, you know, on a coffee mug or just, uh, you know, this would be a digital, you can make this to sell. So, you know, you have a lot of different uses. And um, and really it looks kind of complex, but as you can see, it's mainly just some brush strokes and using a few styles to make something that was really cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions, just let me know.